Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Virgos. How are you doing this week? I hope you had a wonderful month so far. I'm recording this on the 15th, and so it's right smack dab in the middle of the month. And I'm really trying to figure out what reading I wanted to do, what subject, what topic I wanted to focus on. And what I decided upon, because I really liked how it came out for Scorpios, is I'm going to be doing a reading to look at how the energy of the end of Gemini season and or end of Gemini, end of Taurus and moving into Gemini season is going to be impacting the signs I do readings for. So today Mercury moves into Gemini. So or, <laughs> Mercury moves into Taurus. I don't know. Gemini is on my mind. Mercury moves into Taurus. And so that is shifting some of the energy a bit. It's uh, making us look a little bit at like Taurus characteristics communicating like a Taurus if you have any Taurus in your chart um, you know you'll be feeling some of the impact of that eventually Mercury moves pretty fast though but it was in Aries for the longest because it went retrograde in Aries and then it was just kind of like sitting in Aries like it was in Aries for quite some time Mercury in Aries and Mercury in Mars Mars is now in Aries have been pretty active and with how active Gemini season is and Gemini will be because Jupiter will be in Gemini for about a year um roughly around next year sometime Uranus is going to move into Gemini so like Gemini is really going to be highlighted for quite some time so understanding and getting in touch with your any Gemini placements you have any aspects to Gemini that you have um and your relationship to Mercury and how you communicate will be very helpful for you over the next, I would say, well, next two years, but just like for quite some time because Uranus will be, moves pretty slow, as we all know, um, through the signs. So at least I think Uranus will move into Gemini next year. I'm pretty sure it does. It might be a year after that. Uranus moves pretty slow, especially if we have a retrograde, which I don't remember if we have a retrograde this year for Uranus or not. Anyway really important for you to have that awareness of kind of what's going on in your birth chart and how that relates to Gemini because then anything that's happening in the uh, realm of Gemini now through a transit will be impacting you through your native chart all right so we're going to take a look at what that's going to look like for you so we're going to get your general card and then we're going to take a look at kind of the end what's like the tourist kind of energy the end of that tourist season energy Ooh, okay so page of pentacles you're always about money my lovely virgos uh but this is looking pretty nice so right now are you feeling pretty good about things uh, maybe you're getting some recognition that you haven't been getting before. Maybe you're feeling very seen. Maybe you're feeling very connected to childlike energy and wonder um, and feeling really good and positive about that. We have the Page of Wands. Maybe you're very excited about a new project that's coming up for you or a vacation that you have coming up for you. Interesting that we have the Empress in reverse. So there may be feeling like a little a little stagnancy, a little bit of like there's something that you've been working on um, that hasn't is ready quite yet for birth. Ooh, and a Two of Cups. But that's okay. It seems like you've got some partnership coming up here, whether that is a literal relationship or a creative relationship. There's some support coming in here. There's a lot of youthfulness here. There's a lot of growth here. There's a lot of like desire for expansion and for collaboration here. I don't know if these desires are coming to fruition with that empress in reverse because that's very much giving like feeling a little stuck, like late term pregnancy, things kind of just like really sitting. Maybe even feeling like a little disconnected from the earth, a little disconnected from your groundedness, even though you're feeling very good um, ego wise, your ego has been pretty fed and it's feeling pretty successful. There still might be like a weird kind of energy vibing there for you a little bit. And so I would be mindful of that as we close out uh, tourist season. We do have the page of pentacles. So somewhere you're taking your pentacle and you're kind of going and doing your own thing. So we'll have to see how that plays out for you. Your next card is the hangman in reverse. This is good. Okay, so that stagnant energy is finally moving. All of that, all of that Taurus energy, love Taurus energy. And for you, 
Um, Taurus, any planets that you have, rising sign NC, anything like that, that is in Virgo will be, I believe it is, uh, sextile. No, not sextile. It should be a trine, perhaps, to Taurus. Um, and so there will be a positive pool between them. There will be a positive relationship between them. You share similar um, elements. You're both ruled by Earth signs. You're both Earth signs. You're both ruled by Earth or associated with earthy aspects, you know, um, and so the energy can get along pretty well and you can help each other out there. For you, it seems like part of this has been really trying to help you to birth and move along some things financially um, that might have been feeling a little stagnant. We have the fire, the hangman in reverse. That is that getting that revelation, getting that insight. As you can see, these both kind of look like halos, like little bits of the sun um, rising overhead. So like a lot of insights, a lot of clarity, a lot of moving forward forward especially mentally king of pentacles this could be you this could be someone else but with that lovely you know virgo energy this could be you like feeling like okay i really know where i belong i really know where i want to be financially and i'm really feeling supported in my endeavors we do have a seven of um a seven of swords followed by a king of cups and a four of swords there could be some just like wisdom or knowledge as things are moving forward of the plans that you need to be making that you need to have some really wise strategic especially maybe perhaps emergency plans in place so if you've been making some big investments or you've been really seeing some um, really large strides being made financially you do need to be thinking about kind of contingency plans or Things that you would do in case something were to happen, like an emergency were to happen, a loan were to fall through, you know, uh, you were unable to work for some time, anything like that. You just need to be really kind of planning ahead, planning for the future. Sevens are all about exploration. They're about breaking out of the box. They're about thinking about things differently. So it is like an invitation to really kind of be a little... Um, curious and to be a little experimental in how you're approaching things and moving forward. King of Cups here is a lovely watery energy that's coming in to perhaps offer some support or it might be just you become, getting to a place where you feel much more emotionally secure. This could be the two individuals who are showing up here in this Two of Cups situation. So um, <clears throat> could be a bit of that King of Pentacles, King of Cups, like two individuals coming together that are able to make really wise plans about how to approach and deal with things going Going forward. There could also be, though, that there might be someone who's not all that they seem, um, that might be doing a little lying, cheating, stealing. So you need to be very grounded. You need to be making wise choices because you need to be prepared in case something were to happen. There is some rest, though. You do need to take a little bit of a break. Make sure you're not overworking yourself, which is totally a... Um, <laughs> which is totally a Virgo thing. You're literally getting the lover's card, which is the Gemini card. So you're getting some good. Oh, and you're also ruled by Mercury. So this is really nice for you. Um, a very active Gemini with a very active Mercury will work out pretty well for you because you're also ruled by Mercury. So where Mercury's moving and doing his thing, you'll be moving and doing your thing, too. Um, so you have the lover's card here. Ooh, and you have the ten of pentacles in reverse. This could be related to the seven of swords, this lying, cheating, stealing, needing to take a little bit of a break. So the lover's card is, as we know, all about this energy of which path you're going to take and how, yes, you're often very influenced. We're all influenced and conditioned to respond to things in a certain way, to feel like we have to live our lives a certain way and we have to get to these points where we decide, do we continue to uh, give in to our conditioning or do we decide to walk our own path? And so the lover's card showing up is saying that this Gemini season will be another opportunity for you to choose which path you're going to take. Legacy is turned on its head. So you're either deciding that perhaps your legacy that you've been building is something that's not in alignment with you or you are rejecting the legacy that you have inherited. Uh, especially if you've been trying to put things together, you have a page of pentacles kind of going and planting your own seeds, doing your own thing. You may be rejecting a family legacy. You may be rejecting the path that has been laid out for you. There's a lot more balance, though, that's going to come from this. A lot more feeling of self-assuredness. Oh, how interesting. Okay. So we're getting the... Uh, temperance card which is Sagittarius energy and then we're getting the Hierophant which is 
um, Taurus energy. So perhaps a little bit of a leftovers from those lessons, from these lessons in um, Taurus that have been happening for you. So the planets that have been moving through Taurus, Jupiter, um, Uranus, they've been Uranus collectively has been having us reassess our and, and maybe and some very radical changes happening to our economy, happening to our value systems, happening to how we find peace, especially with our senses. So there's been a lot of changes that have happened for the entertainment and the arts. Um, a lot of things that we've been seeing and switches in the idea of the celebrity and the idea of the value of entertainment and art and how we connect and relate to that. Uh, the understanding that people have to be a lot more upfront and active. There is no shying away from disconnecting from the things that are happening in our world around us. Everyone has to kind of speak up and be active. So there's been a lot of shifts and changes that have happened in that arena. And so with this temperance card, we have this pouring from one cup into the other. So needing to temper some things, perhaps temper your expectations, but also in a way of getting your mind and your heart onto the same page of seeing things from a different perspective, taking perhaps a higher perspective, uh, operating in more of a Sagittarian perspective, which is very philosophical, very much um, understanding and relying upon faith instead of uh, perhaps being so focused on things needing to be logical. So you have this temperance card and then you have this Taurus energy, the Hierophant, the High Priest. And so that is kind of the lived experience and the, the polarity of the High Priestess, which is about combining our uh, unconscious and conscious together. The Hierophant is kind of serving as combining our ideas of spirit, God, universe, whatever, and the the masses, the people, ourselves, and kind of standing in that in-between space and receiving those messages in a way that can be very clearly communicated. So right now, at the end, as you move towards this Gemini season, as things slip into Gemini season, there may be a calling or there will be a situation that will come up where you are asked to choose a path and an alignment. And this opportunity that's going to come up for you is going to be one that either you may find that your legacy that you've been building is no longer in alignment with you or rejecting the legacy that you have been passed down. And from there, you will find that there needs to be a bit more balance that you've found between your heart and your mind, between your higher self and your earthly self. And that part of that may need to come from getting into alignment with your faith practices and with this idea of um, religion or order and how has that played out and influenced or impacted this, the decisions that you've made going forth in life and how you may need to redo some of those decisions, um, re-examine some of those choices and some of those um, ways that you believe, those beliefs that you hold and things of that nature. It is very the energy of Taurus, it is very the energy of Gemini that is going to be asking questions, that is going to be gathering information, that is going to be working on communication, that is going to be kind of the highlight here of what is it that is really truly in alignment with you? Where do you need to be planting your new pentacle? Um, if we look at this on a mundane level, this could very much be a switch in a job and this could very much be um, starting over at a new job, something of that nature. Uh, this could very much be finding something that is in a realm that offers you a lot of freedom and a lot of exploration. It brings you a lot of uh, peace and balance and it could be something that's perhaps in a government sphere in a local institution um, for me it's giving a lot more like either higher education that's very Sagittarius very tourist energy um, or local government or in religion so you might be finding that you are ready to take a new path and find a new job that's in one of those realms or in one of those spheres or kind of reorganize some of those things all right let's take a look at your outcome Interesting. Oh, we're not taking all of those, but we'll take that one. Okay, so Ace of Cups. 
cup is overflowing. You're taking care of yourself emotionally. A lot's there. We have an eight of cups of leaving a situation behind that was not emotionally fulfilling. Again, it's kind of giving that this um, situation that you've been in, whether that a little bit of work, but also a little bit of your kind of where you've emotionally committed yourself was not fulfilling it was not exactly what you were looking for we have the queen of swords here so this could be you this could be someone else but it's someone who's taking a very logical approach to things that might be even a little bit cold a little bit um just focused on the bottom line uh someone who communicates very well and has very strict strong boundaries you may be finding that you're getting, you're walking towards, walking away from a situation that was not emotionally fulfilling for you, walking towards someone who has more of a Queen of Swords attitude, a Queen of Swords approach. You yourself may be leaving a space where you felt very emotionally activated towards a more logical perspective. And even then, when we see this individual walking towards the Queen of Swords, even the Page of Cups is turned towards, it's looking at their cup and looking at the fish in the cup but it's also facing the queen of swords so everything's kind of coming into this queen of swords energy if this is you then this is a lot of opportunities a lot of people moving towards a lot of the way that you're moving in the future is towards more of this logical and i do think that that's a very gemini-esque energy and it's very much so asking a lot of questions getting really curious not feeling like you have to be tied down to anything even Sagittarius this is Gemini sitting over Sagittarius these are our lovely oppositions and so if you have Sagittarius placements um, you may find that again there will be a lot of opposition there will be a lot of pooling a lot of um, encouragement a lot of situations that are going to come up that may feel very challenging because uh, it is outside of how you would normally operate with something Sagittarius is mutable fire it is the oh I've seen some great kind of analogies I was watching some videos about it but it, you know maybe the forest fire a fire that is just uh, burning embers so like spreading fire right um and so with that it's kind of like spreading ideas spreading messages um so you may be finding that part of your path is something where you, again, teaching, education, government, things of that nature, where it's a firmly held institution, it's an, under, it's an understood institution, but one that will bring you a little bit more balance emotionally and mentally, that perhaps it is time for you to take up this new passion and to leave the situation that you were in and one where you'll be teaching, explaining that information, explaining ideas or gathering. You Maybe you're going to be a researcher. You know, and so getting into the field of research or perhaps you were creating, you know, surveys or qu or quizzes or, you know, things of that nature. Maybe you're doing a little bit more qualitative as opposed to quantitative um, research. And so you're doing a lot more telling stories, gathering stories, speaking to people, um, public speaking, things of that nature, as opposed to being so worried about numbers and things that are that are of that nature. And with this, it could be something that leads you to a space of creativity, but it's an opportunity opportunity for great emotional fulfillment it's leaving a situation behind and even if you look at this we have an eight we have a cup here and a cup here that's the ten of cups so you're moving towards this really great idea of what it means to be fully happy fully joyful fully emotionally fulfilled and it's about planting a new seed somewhere else okay let's take a look at i've pulled for everyone um and so for you virgos with venus in the underworld so there is uh it started off in aries aries it moved all the way through taurus so there was that trine energy being activated for you of redoing these um values and getting them into alignment and it'll be moving into gemini um and it'll go all the way through gemini i'm, I'm trying to remember i think is it like seven degrees gemini or something like that that it goes uh conjunct you know in the lines with the sun during that superior conjunction but at some point in Gemini maybe it's 16 or 17 uh June 10th I believe is when the Venus superior conjunction with the sun happens and so when that happens it'll be in Gemini and it'll start to really switch things up and then it will come up from the underworld so there may have been some things that you felt have been pulled from you that have been taken from you that had the wolves been pulled over your eyes seven of swords um that you've experienced uh, as Venus has moved through the underworld, um, so Venus being in Taurus as it moved through the underworld would have created um, 
a space where you would have also experienced something very similar, but quite not quite the same as what tourists would have went through. Uh, all right, let's get your Oracle card. Discretion. Okay. They are like, this is not the time for you to be out and about yelling and screaming all the stuff that you have going on. It's three and six, which equals nine. I believe that is one of your special numbers, my lovely Virgos. 36. Okay. The key to protection is discretion. Whether you are working on a new vision or harboring thoughts of creating a new relationship or business, discretion is called for. Just like a seed needs to be protected in the dark soil, pokes carefully into garden life, it's the same with your ideas. Be careful with whom you share right now. Keep to the gardens of contemplation as your intentions grow strong and vital. Stay close to the gentle light of the moon which nourishes, nourishes poets and dreamers. Sometimes we get so hungry for connection and approval we overshare or share with folks who are unworthy, seven of swords, of our intimacy. This is an invitation to step back and consider how you are sharing guard your worth. So perhaps that's the message from that hangman and the uh, king of pentacles and the seven of swords and the king of cups is to have discretion. You don't need to be sharing this grand idea, this new wave from this new information with everyone. You need to kind of be focusing on planting those seeds, getting that clarity, um, and starting the work than necessarily just kind of talking with everybody. All right, that's going to be it, Virgos. Love you, love you, love you. Private reading, personal reading. Go ahead and check out my website, www.theblissinstitute.org. I have a transit special running right now, so if you would like to get a transit reading, how the planets are currently happening and how they're impacting you personally, you can go and order that. It's only $30. I will see you all later. I love you. Bye.